job, Dennis. Welcome, everybody. You know, even though it's raining outside, it's just really a great day. I always get excited on the day when we have the Lord's Supper. Amen. Because it's such a special day, and because it reminds us about our deeper relationship with Christ, and and uh, I just I love it. And so today is going to be a very special day. Um, worship team, come on up here and get started, and we'll start worship. And uh, uh, the Lord bless you. And um, he's already blessed me, so I hope he blesses you too.
Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, again, we thank you, Lord, for bringing us all together here again, Lord God, to praise and to worship you, Lord God. Thank you for the sacrifice that you made on the cross for us, Lord God, so that we can all be promised eternal life, Lord God, when we deserve, Lord God. And I have no fear, Lord. I thank you. We thank you as a church and as a body in Christ, Lord God. And we thank you for blessing our Avenue Church, Lord God, so many times over, Lord God. We thank you and praise you and ask in Jesus' name your blessing. Amen. Amen. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. Uh, Carlos, do you mind if I do the scripture? <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, go right ahead. I will. I went straight as a prayer. I'm so sorry. Today we'll be reading from Luke uh, 14 to 19, Luke 22. When the hour had come, he reclined at the table at the apostle with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I shall never again eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he said, take this and share it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine from now on until the kingdom of God comes. And when he had taken some bread and given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to them, saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Thank you, Carlos. You may be seated. Technically, what Carlos just read to you is, has begun our services for the Lord's Supper today because I'm going to do it a little different than I normally do it. And as you know, I'm not normal anyway, so. <laughs> but I always get excited when it's time to do the Lord's Supper and to participate in that with the church. So we'll be doing that a little bit later on. Um, a couple of things coming up that uh, you definitely need to be aware of. The first thing is there's going to be a church council meeting this coming Thursday at 5 o'clock. So trustees and church council is going to be in the, the prayer room at 5, yes? You said Thursday, but it's a Tuesday. Oh, it's Thursday. She's right. My mistake. Okay. Did you put Tuesday up there? I did. You know, it's hard to get good help. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> Just yeah, it's going to be on Thursday. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and then there's going to be a business meeting next Sunday after the service is over. We've started doing it that way, as you know, for about the last year, because so many folks have a hard time coming out at night, and we don't want you to be excluded from business. And we are required to have a business meeting every quarter. So we're going to do that and take care of whatever business needs to be taken care of. And, uh, uh, and then um, just for the deacons, uh, for you to know that the next deacons meeting, I believe, is on um, February 1st, isn't it, Dennis? Is it, is it a week from Thursday, February 1st? I don't know. <laughs> I, th I think it is. Okay. Anyway, the first Thursday, the first Thursday in February, I think, is on on Thursday. Okay. So anyway, we'll get that cleared up eventually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see what else we got. I think that's about it. Um, there's some things that we're going to be talking about later when we do prayer, and uh, because we um, March Bollinger is in the hospital. And uh, um, I'm, I'm very troubled by that, and we're going to talk about that, and we're going to pray and everything. And I look around, and it's great to see you guys all here today. It's nice having the, 
at Hispanic Church meeting with us today. Pastor um, Marco is here, and we're great, grateful for you, for your church. And it's going to be a good day. So I'm going to ask the ushers to come and do the um, offering. And Angel, I assume you're doing the prayer. <laughs> So we pray, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for every day that you bless us. May you be with our pastor as he delivers this message. May you be with our congregation. May you please heal all those who need to be healed. We ask and bless this offering, both the gift and the giver. We ask all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Everybody said, Amen. Oh, 
In the sky. 
Thank you. Um, as you know, we have prayer time every week. And uh, uh, I try to keep you as current as I can, and I try to keep our list as current as I can. And I've just about decided that next Sunday I'm going to have my list printed out for everybody to have one. So that if you know of some people that that need to be crossed off the list, or you need to add some, you can do that, and then we'll sort of update this. Because I've got 115 names now. <laughs> and that's okay, but uh, I wanna make certain that it's current. But uh, one of the most current things is that uh, Margie Bollinger is in the hospital. And um, I'm not certain, Carol, she, she passed out in her room, didn't she? Yes. Yeah. And so she's at, at uh, Pomona Valley Hospital. And uh, so, and she's doing okay, I think. She has an infection. She has an infection. And so we want to really pray for her. And uh, so is there anybody that wants to add another name to our list? Anybody that needs to be added? Okay, here's the names. Sharon and Johnny, Michelle, Michael, Mary, Jose, Steve, Richard, Daniel, and Carol. Donna, Nedra, Marge, and this is Marge. We just pray for her every Sunday anyway. Uh, Vera, Jack, Pat, Sarah, Sam, Jim, and George. Mike, Kay, Sharon, Marja. Tony, Karen, Marion, Mike, Mara, Victor. Jamie, Terry, Bobby, Cookie, Terry, Danny, Lydia, Alicia, Vicki, Sharak, uh, Josh, Paul, Billy, Sue, Chris, Jacqueline, Mary Helen, Hermosa, um, Rachel, Juanito, Bob, Sylvia, Patricia, Bobby, Marion, Joshua, Pam, Valentino, Joe, George, Gabriel, Dale, Jennifer, Anna, Dennis, Amy, uh, Justin, Charles, Jackie, Dion, Frank, Joe, Ramon and Mary Jane's boys, um, Kathy's grand, uh, granddaughters, uh, John and Terry, Cynthia Clark, Pauline, Mello, Martin, Papuba, Linda, Michael, Kathy, Robert, Margie, uh, Sandy, uh, Sally, Sue, Mario, um, Rosanna, Monica, Jim, Nevert, Philip, the Board family, John's mom, uh, Linda, Pauline, Dorothy, Jodel, Januga, Don, Carol, Savannah, Paul, Betty, Garrett, Reds, mom and dad, um, Jim, Braden, Al, Elizabeth, and then we want to pray for the U.S. Uh, every week and every day. Um, sometimes uh, I listen to the news and try to keep up with everything, and sometimes I step back in my head and I think, who are we? You know, who are we anyway? And God just needs to really guide and direct us. And you know, frankly, um, my attitude is that we can have our beliefs one way or another, but none of us know for sure. We just have to trust God, for God to do what God will do, and to be okay with that. And then I want us to pray for Israel. Israel's coming under a lot of criticism and fire, and of course, uh, we, we're over here and we're looking back, and we, and we don't know what, what to comment about. We don't know what's right, what's wrong. They're in a war, and war is ugly. And we just need to pray for Israel because the Bible tells us pray for Israel. Amen. And then for our church. To pray for our church and uh, each member, each person that is beloved unto God. And uh, pray that um, God will continue taking us in the right direction. And uh, that we'll be happy with that direction. Let's bow and pray, shall we? Father God, we love you and praise you. We lift up the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name, King of kings and Lord of lords. And Father,
Father, we thank you that you love us and that your Holy Spirit is leading this church. And Father, we come to this time as we pray for these people we just named. Most of them, we don't even know. They've been requested to us, and so we pray. And we need to do that, Lord. But you know every person. You know what their problem is, what your plans are. And we leave it in your hands because we know your will is best. But we, we pray for these folks, Lord. Loved ones, friends. And we pray your very best for them. And Lord, we thank you in advance for answered prayer and for your guidance in our lives, for your guidance in this church. to celebrate the Passover, 
that this was going to be the last time they ever ate with their Lord. And, and that's historical somewhat, very spiritual somewhat, because God was bringing them along and teaching them to understand the depths of Christianity and the depths of what was, what was coming. Now at that time, the apostles still did not know exactly what was coming. They knew that something was up. Because Jesus began, had been talking, you know, I will not be around for much longer. And so we find that it was that very same week, just a couple of days later, that Jesus is taken prisoner. And he's brought up before Pilate. And ultimately, he's hung on the cross to die. So the, the apostles began to look back and think, this really was our last supper with Jesus because he's no longer with us in physical form. So I look back in the Gospels, and I'm sure you know this, but when we read them all together, they, they shed some light and, and give some guidance on it. For example, Matthew. Now Matthew was one of the apostles and each, each of the apostles, the, the, the disciples, they had their own uniqueness about them. We know that Peter, James, and John were fishermen. Um, I know a lot about fishermen. My grandfather was a, uh, a professional fisherman in Newport Beach for 40 years. And I used to bait lines for him on the weekends when I was a teenager. Fishermen ha have their own little world. And they usually have a boat. And so <clears throat> Peter, James, and John had a boat, and they had people working for them and everything. But anyway, Matthew wasn't from that background at all. Who remembers what Matthew's job was? He was a tax collector. Now wait a minute, you almost want to back up on that and say, what? He was a what? Because the other apostles at first weren't sure that Matthew should be part of their group. Because he, as a tax collector, who did he work for? The Romans. He worked for Rome. And Rome was the one that was going to take Jesus' life. Anyway, Matthew gives a very unique perspective of the Lord's Supper. It says in Matthew chapter 26, verse 26 to 30, he says, Now while they were eating, so they were eating because they were celebrating the Passover. Jesus took some bread, and after a blessing, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is being poured out for many for forgiveness of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it with you new in my Father's kingdom. And after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Remember the story I've told you about my dad and how he believed when you had the Lord's Supper, you weren't supposed to speak, you were supposed to walk out and be silent. This is the, this is the verse he gets that from. It says, and after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And I don't know how many times my dad says, read that, son. Did it say they were talking? And so I just said, right, yeah, okay. You know, but my dad, you know, that was my dad's perspective of this. He had a deep reverence for the Lord's Supper. So this, um, This historical perspective that, that Matthew gives us. Another thing that it, it seems like there's almost the idea that there was only one cup. And that the cup was passed around at the table and they all took a sip out of the same cup. Now, particularly in our day, particularly in the last three years, that's a pretty touchy situation. <laughs> And a lot of churches still do that. I don't know what they did during COVID. We don't do it here, 
I don't think that you have to do it that way to be doing it properly, but I think that's the way they did it. Because it was the way they were able to participate in it together and feel a, feel a closeness to Christ. So anyway, that's Matthew's perspective of the Lord's Supper. He was there. The next one is in Mark, and, and it's a, a, another one that's interesting now. Out of all of, uh, by the way, Mark wasn't an apostle. He was a young, young guy. But he was a good friend of Peter's. Where Peter went, you usually found Mark. And it says in Mark chapter 14, beginning with verse 22, while they were eating, he took some bread, and after a blessing, he broke it and gave it to them and said, Take it, this is my body. And when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine again until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God, and after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Now what's kind of interesting, do you notice a difference uh, in the two? They're exactly the same thing that happened, but it was both of their perspectives of how they remember it. But it comes out the same. Now the next person that I've always been very intrigued about his rendition of the Lord's Supper was Luke. And he wasn't even there. Because remember, Luke, what did he do? He was Paul's physician. Many people don't know that Paul was a very sick man. And he traveled all the time. And everywhere Paul went, Luke went to take care of him. And when he was in prison in Rome, Luke was there. But Luke had talked to all of the disciples and he had done an, an investigation so he could write a gospel. He wanted all of the facts to be clear and true. And all of the things that, that Luke writes about in his gospel is more of a history book. Because in most of it, he wasn't there. But he, and he knew all the disciples and interviewed them and talked to them. But anyway, look what he has to say about the Lord's Supper in Luke chapter 22. When the hour came, he reclined at table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat the Passover with you before I suffer. Now, <clears throat> when he said before I suffer, they didn't have a clue what he was talking about. They kind of looked at each other and said, what? what do you mean suffer? And I say to you, I shall not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he said, take this and share it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine from now on until the kingdom of God comes. And when he had taken some bread and given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is being given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me is probably one of the most important statements in the gospel stories of the Lord's Supper. That's why we do it. We certainly do it for fellowship within the church because we're the church family. We do this to, to, together. But the purpose is to remember Jesus. But I want you to notice an interesting thing. Well, let me finish reading this little part here. Uh, he says, this is my body which is being given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup after they had eaten, saying, this cup which is poured out for you is the new covenant of my blood. All of the <clears throat> all of the renditions that talk about the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper, pretty much say the same thing. Um, 
a few maybe little details are different, but, but the whole thing revolved around the bread representing the body of Christ and the cup representing his shed blood. Now, sometimes we read in scripture where Jesus was preaching and he says, you cannot be saved unless you eat of my body and drink of my blood. And, and people looked at each other and said, wait a minute, what's that mean? What's that talking about? But after the crucifixion, everybody knew what it meant. It wasn't an actual drinking of his blood, of course. It was a way of remembering the shed blood of Jesus. He shed his blood at Calvary for all of us. Now the reason that's important is because remember the reason they had originally gotten together to eat? It was to celebrate the Passover, remember? The Passover meal was different than the Lord's Supper. The Passover meal had an animal in it. What was the animal? It was a lamb. Because the, the God required that while they were in Egypt was for them to sacrifice a lamb and take the blood of the lamb and smear it across the lintel of the door and on the doorpost so that when the death angel came, he would pass over that house. Why? Because they had obeyed God, they had proven themselves to be children of God, believers, and they did what God said. Because you see, the last curse that God brought on Egypt for having enslaved the Jews was that the first child, the first boy child of every family would die. But not the Hebrews. Because when the death angel came, they had the blood smeared on their lintel and on their door, doorposts. And the death angel passed them by. And that's where the term Passover came. And they celebrated that once a year, but they also ate of the lamb when they had them together. So, <clears throat> you see a little historic, some historical things that they did in the beginning and then as this developed, it has come what it is today. We didn't gather together to celebrate the Passover for a number of reasons. Most of us are not Hebrews. I'm not even sure if we have a Hebrew in this church. I'd be very proud if we did, but I don't know that we do. Do we? Anybody a Hebrew? And is willing to admit it? Oh, excuse me. But you know what I mean? I, that would thrill me. Now, when I was here the first time, Richard Evans. We had a Hebrew in our church. And he was an awesome guy. He played the trumpet while his wife Beth played the piano. In those days, there was a grand piano over here. And he would come in, and every time there was a Hebrew celebration, he'd come up and he'd say, Pastor, did you know that today is the day we celebrate Passover, or today is the day we do this, or today is the day we did that. And, and I learned a lot from him because it helped me to understand where it fit in to what we believe. So anyway, you see the history here. You see the background of all of this. And now, um, I think Jesus put a lot into us about the understanding of the Lord's Supper. He made sure that by the time we reached where we are today in this church, 2,000 years later, we had a place to go to know what to do and why to do it. And then Jesus has done that. So we, we understand about the Passover. And when it became time for the disciples and they would celebrate and have a fellowship after the resurrection. So now let me tell you how it worked and the way we know it is from what Acts teaches us. Keep in mind that the early Christians were Hebrews. 
the Jews that had accepted Christ. And there was a pretty good number of them. And there was very, very few, if any, Gentiles in their group at all because they didn't associate with Gentiles. In fact, if you were to ask a Jew in those days, we're, we've been saved by the blood of Jesus. Well, can a Gentile be saved? Um, gee, I don't know. And that was the general attitude. Then Paul comes along. And God gives Paul the word. The gospel is to go out to the Gentiles. And they are accepted among us. And we are all one church. Now, the Jews didn't like that. And there was a lot of controversy in the, in the church in those days. But you know one of the things that ended the controversy? <clears throat> in 70 AD, which was about maybe around 40 years after Jesus arose from the grave and ascended into heaven, Israel ceased to exist. Titus, the Roman general from Rome, came in and completely leveled Jerusalem, including the temple, the synagogues, everything. And the Jews were carried off slaves to every part of the country. And so the concept of whether you're a Jewish Christian or a Gentile Christian became, wasn't even discussed anymore. And so here we are today, 2,000 years later, celebrating the things of this Jewish carpenter who God sent to us because he was God's son. He was a Hebrew, but that meant nothing to us because we have been accepted because we have become children of God. And Paul taught how when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are brought in to the family of God as sons and daughters because we all share the same Holy Spirit. And when we get together, the Spirit of God that is in you and the Spirit of God that is in the person sitting next to you and on the back row and on the front row and wherever, that spirit comes together in this place and we celebrate Jesus and we remember Jesus because we have the spirit within us that he has placed there. Now, the next perspective, and we're getting, we're getting close now, folks. <laughs> in 1 Corinthians, how did Paul know about the Lord's Supper? I mean, what was his official understanding of that? Well, we find that in Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 28. He starts off by writing, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed took bread. We're going to stop there a minute. So God himself told Paul the meaning of the Lord's Supper and how it tied in with the Passover and how the blood and the body of Jesus and how all of that was important to us as believers. Paul had to know because he had to teach the Gentiles. The Gentiles didn't celebrate Passover. So they didn't understand the same concept of it and where it came from as the Jews did. And so things evolved into where we are today. Most of the church is Gentile today. It may surprise you to know that in the United States, by some uh, Hebrews, the United States is referred to as the New Jerusalem because this is their home. They came here to escape persecution and they have been here all that time. And also, we celebrate as Gentiles, but in the entire world, I don't think there's
there's more than 10,000 Jews. I mean, uh, 10 million Jews. The Jewish family, the Jewish race is very small. And I think that there's, there's about 6,000 of them living here in the United States. Now that may or may not interest you or even make any matter. But the point that I'm making is, is that we celebrate a Jewish holiday when we celebrate the Lord's Supper. We are remembering Passover, but it's more than that to us. It has become our relationship to God through his son, Jesus. So Paul goes on and said, this is what, what I learned from the Lord. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup <clears throat> is the new covenant of my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and in so doing, he is to eat of the bread and drink of the cup. So Paul adds to that the fact that Sometimes people partake of the Lord's Supper in an unworthy way. What does that mean? That means that it's wrong for us to come and partake of the Lord's Supper if we have unconfessed sin in our life. This is a time for us to come and prepare ourselves for partaking of the bread and the fruit of the vine in the remembrance of Jesus, but to come and give our best to Jesus on this day. So that if we've gotten something in our life that stands between us and God, before we partake of the Lord's Supper, we need to privately confess that to the Lord. That doesn't mean you have to come up here and stand up, oh, I did this, I did that, no. This is between you and God, but it needs to be done because God does not want us to partake of the Lord's Supper in an unworthy way. Paul goes on, by the way, in that, this chapter in 1 Corinthians, and he says, that's why a number of you have been sick in the church because you have come and taken up the Lord's Supper in an unworthy way. Now, I don't, I'm not trying to imply at all if you've been sick, it's because you're a sinner. <laughs> because we're all sinners. Right? Amen. And me most of all, because I've been the sickest of all lately. <laughs> but you see what I'm saying? This Lord's Supper, when we partake of it, this is where we come and it ties us in with Christ better than any other thing we can do. We are sharing together of the represented body of Christ and the represented blood of Christ. We come as a family, we come as a church, we come as a body of Christ to do this together. And so we are ready to do that now. And we're gonna to begin to prepare ourselves. And Dennis, what I'd like first of all is for you to have our guys come forward and you new deacons to be. Many of you do not know what's going on in our church. We presently have some new men, some men, they're not new men, some, <laughs> some men who are preparing themselves to be deacons. And so they are going to participate. You can sit down in the front row, guys. So they are coming to participate and serve you today, which is one of the things that deacons do. And so I'd like for you to know that Ramon and Pio and Angel and Carlos, and that and that's all, right? 
And, oh, and Hector. This is not here. And Hector. These are guys that we are meeting together once a month and we're talking about the responsibilities of deacons and what you do in the church and everything. And so they're coming today. The first time they come together today with the deacon body, <laughs> which is only one body in our church, <laughs> Dennis, and to, to serve the Lord's Supper to you and to partake of this in that special way. So what we're gonna do first of all I told you before that one of the things that we do is we are supposed to confess our sins and get our hearts right with the Lord. I'm not saying that you haven't done that already, but I'm saying that it's something that should not be overlooked in our life when we are approach the Lord's Supper. So I'm going to ask everyone to bow their heads, and I'm going to invite you to talk to the Lord. And to pray that he will forgive you and you know he will as you confess any sin or any shortcoming or any problem in your life. Just give it to him and say, Lord, I give this to you. And I ask that you forgive me. And we know that in Jesus we are already forgiven. Pray that little prayer and prepare yourself to partake of the Lord's Supper. Father God, we come to you this morning. We come to you because we love you. Because you've called us. And you've brought us together as a family. So we come to remember you today in this special way. And I pray, Father God, that you will pour out your spirit upon this group, upon this body of Christ. And bless us today that we might be at one with you and completely. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone said Amen. Amen. Okay, Dennis, are they going to uncover? Yeah. Okay, you, who's, who's uncovering? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> yeah, if you'll do that, please. I've been told to be sure to tell you this. Because we're doing the Lord's Supper a little bit different today. We have chunks of bread that, that's fresh bread that we're serving. Because we've had some problems with some of the things in the past. We're, we're not going to do that. But I've been told to tell you, to, to let you know for sure this has been done while wearing gloves. Okay? So it's sanitary and complete. And so I'm going to ask you to, are you guys going to pass it out? Um, okay, you can pass out the bread. Go ahead and get it to everybody right now.
It says that on that day, as you know, Lord, we just read, when they were around the table, fellowshipping and breaking bread together, that Jesus broke the bread. And he said, take eat of this. It's my body. And I'm going to ask my mom to bless this, please. representation of your blood. May you bless our bodies and may you be with us in every day in our lives. We ask us this in Christ's name. Amen. Take and drink all of it. Thank you. 
feel a togetherness here at this church because we are the family of God in this place. I believe we're going to sing, I love you, Lord. Everybody said, Amen. 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 God bless you guys. Have a great day.